Hey friend, if you're just getting started with video or you're a savvy, busy entrepreneur, you don't necessarily want to dig into technical video editing software and you want to learn the basics so that when you go and hire an editor, you'll know what you're doing, what you're asking for. So in this tutorial, I'm going to get you started with Adobe Premiere Rush, which is the light version of Adobe Premiere Pro. This software has built-in templates, sound effects, music that you can use. I always recommend having your own branded assets, but if you're just getting started, this is gonna help you learn how to edit your own videos start to finish without overwhelming yourself. Let's dig right in. All right, first off, let's open up our Adobe Rush software. Click on create a new project. Down here at the bottom left corner, it says untitled, let's give it a name just to keep it organized. And if you turn on sync with Creative Cloud, one of the cool things you can do with this is you could actually sync this project over to an iPad or an iPhone and you could use the mobile Adobe Rush application to perform edits while you're on the road. So I'm gonna leave that turned off for now. And the next thing we're gonna do is we have to find our source clips. So I've already organized it into this folder and I definitely recommend always organizing your projects with clear and simple names so you always know where your stuff is at. So I created an imports folder where I dropped the original video clips and the file that I'm looking for is this one here. Now, the cool thing with Rush is if you select more than one clip, you know the sequence that you want to put them in to your timeline, which is a fancy way of saying your video editing project from left to right. It, you can actually just click multiple clips. So check this out, I have one on this one. If I wanted to add this clip in here, that would become two, and then it would load those into the timeline in the same sequence of the numbers you've selected. I'm gonna go ahead and unselect these for now. And I've got another clip in another folder, so it's going to remember the one that I've already selected, and I'm gonna go and grab a graphic. There's a graphic signature that I always put in at the end of a lot of my video projects, and here it is right here. So it still says number two. Cool, now we're gonna click on create at the bottom right corner, and it's gonna grab your files, and it's gonna put them into a sequence for you automatically, which is really cool. Now the first thing I'm gonna show you is a couple of the tools at the bottom left corner here. We can duplicate clips, we can delete clips, we can open up this so we can expand the audio. Because it's easier to edit to audio sometimes, I, I recommend turning this on because you can find the spots where you have made a mistake or you uh, there's just no talking points and you want to cut those out really quickly. So let's expand the audio. And the next thing you can do here is control track. So you can toggle this on. I'll show you this really quickly. This is a little bit more like other editing software. So the idea here is that you may have sound effects, additional audio clips, and you layer them on top of each other so that they play at the same time. The same goes for video. If you have visual B-roll clips that you wanna put on top, of your main video file. That's what B-roll is, by the way. It's just visual supplementary footage to exemplify your point. So maybe you have some of those clips, you can layer those on top of your main file, but we're keeping it super simple for this edit. So we're actually gonna turn that feature off and we're just gonna focus on editing to the audio and video. So I already know here I'm gonna, that this gap at the front of the video, I'm gonna cut off. So I'll grab this and drag it over to the spot where it starts. And you may wanna play it back. You can hit the space bar on your keyboard or click the play button here. And I'm just actually going to perform a cut, which is the scissors. So it says the S button. So I'm gonna press S on the keyboard and that performs a cut. Now I'm going to click on this clip that I want to delete and I'm just gonna hit the delete button. Simple as that. Now I've got another gap here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. Just performing two cuts and then one delete. I would like to put a transition in here. We're gonna use some free graphics and this is gonna be super simple. So check this out. I'm gonna click on the plus symbol and then I'm gonna to go to graphics 
and I'm going to pick this graphic here. You can browse through. These are free to use. You can add your own. You could have someone on Fiverr create some of these graphics for you that use your own brand. That's probably the best way to go, but let's try some of these templates out for fun. So I'm gonna grab this here and then click and drag it down to this area and drop it in between these two clips on top of them. And if we drag the playhead across, we can see the animation come up and go away. Okay. So we can double click here and then we can just change the title. So this is stoking the fire. We're talking about the YouTube journey and committing to it. Now we want to change this. Like I can't, I don't like that font, right? So on the right hand side, click on this button here, the graphics button. It opens up this panel. And now because I have this graphic selected, I can now go through this menu on the right hand side and I can start changing the things. Now, one of the things I like to do when I have graphics come up on the screen to make it better is to add sound effects. It just makes it, it gives another layer, more depth to your videos. It makes them more interesting. So we'll click on plus here, click on audio, and in the browse audio menu, click on sound effects. And I'm gonna look for a pop sound. Press enter, and now it's gonna search through all of these free to use sound effects. You can click on the play buttons to hear them. So we'll click add and it actually just placed it down here in the sequence in the exact spot where the playhead was set. Now that graphic is way too long. I don't want it to stick up that long. So check this out. I'm going to highlight this. All you have to do is click on the clip, put your mouse on the right hand side, and then drag this over here. Maybe I don't want to lose the animation of the outro. So I'm going to speed the clip up. So we'll click on the speed button here in the right hand menu, and you can just change the speed of the clip by dragging the duration here. So it's eight seconds. I want this to be three seconds. Now I want to move this graphic and the sound effect together. So I'm going to click on the sound effect, hold down the control button, and then it selects both of them. And then I'm going to move them here to be the transition between these two clips. Now there's a lot more to this application. You can do some pretty cool stuff. I'm gonna show you one more thing, and that is in the right-hand side, if we want to change the audio, you can click on the audio clip here and then you can go down to the audio menu and you can automatically, you can have the volume balanced automatically. You can reduce background noise. There's a few tools in here to try out and, and test them for yourself. If you record your audio well in the beginning, then you won't necessarily have to do very much here, but this could help you fix your audio a bit. Once you're done your project, we are going to export. So we'll click on share. And from here, we just give this a name. Make sure you name the video so you don't end up losing it. And then we're going to actually select the destination so you can find it. There is advanced settings in here. You don't need to change any of the stuff because it was already automatically detected when you created the scene. So it says save to. I don't want to save it into a documents folder. I'll just save it onto the desktop or a folder called renders where I put all of my video clips to make sure that I can find them easily. Cause it's annoying when you go and you send your video out with your software like Premiere Rush and then you can't find where you put it when you go to upload it. So make sure that you put it into a folder where you can find it easily. And the next thing that we'll do is click on the export button. So you can see it's not that hard to edit your own videos. Now, if you're just getting started with YouTube and you'd like to get some guidance in identifying your YouTube channel niche, I've got a free resource for you in the description below this video. It's gonna help you. It's a seven step guide to identifying your YouTube channel niche. Check that free resource out. And if you'd like to learn more about how to automatically transcribe your videos and stylize them and brand them with captions, check out this video up here. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.